Hello and welcome to another development update video for the Pizza Time Collaborative project. In this period of development, the focus is primarily on getting all of our, our assets in the game, um, ranging from obviously our models uh, to our textures and everything in between. This also saw some tweaks to the shader that me and James worked on and an improvement to the master material, which I'll showcase shortly. So first, let's go over those shader changes. You'll be able to see now that the colors are way less blown out um, the shader before was kind of turning all of our reds to oranges and really kind of making the game look quite garish. Uh, now it's much more muted um, and I think it looks a lot better. Um, it also highlights geometry better now. So you'll see on these ballards previously, we had these black lines, these thick back lines on the outline, but now we have these kind of thin gray outlines that showcase some of the geometry. Um, you can see this clearly in action on the statue here uh, and on some other assets such as the barrel. Now moving on to those changes to the master material, you'll see it now supports gradients. So these trees, neither of them have kind of predefined textures. They're all just using an instance of the master material um, and using its new kind of gradient features. So it's very clear to see on this tree here, the gradient goes from blue to red. And this is all obviously changeable within the instance, along with the kind of angle the gradient plays at. So this is going from bottom to top. We could go from left to right and have the blue on the left and the red on the right here. Um, obviously, we use this more subtly throughout the project. So the trees here uh, go from a dark brown to a light brown and then a dark green to a light green. It just saves some work on the artist point uh, view. Uh, however, it does have its limitations. For instance, so it basically it draws off of the UVs um, of the asset, which means if the UVs are a bit wonky, it will uh, not apply the gradient correctly. Um, but for the most part, it works. Um, it's not a catch-all, but it, it will um, speed up development time. Okay, so moving on from art and on to tech. First, I'll cover what the junior developed. So Thomas in this sprint developed a kind of cannon that rotates correctly to face the player um, and then fires at them when they're in their sight. So the kind of top cog moves uh on a, the Z axis, it kind of rotates on the Z axis to face the player. So if I move over here, it would rotate to face me here. And then if the player is above um, or kind of like behind the cannon, the barrel here will try and rotate on the X axis to face the player. So they're fairly smart in how they kind of fire. They don't fire cannibals, but instead enemy seagulls, that if they impact the player, will uh, take them off the game and cause them to respawn. I mainly worked on improvements to the UI and messaging in the game, uh, continually trying to make it easier and easier for a player to pick up the game and understand what they're doing right off the bat. The main thing I added was a UI that plays when the player picks up just a component of an objective. So if they pick up one letter, a kind of small notification will play. Um, and obviously there's the kind of bigger message that plays when all five letters are obtained. There is also now a notification for when the player has collected all objectives and when they have reached that point, the new objective arrow will appear pointing them towards the van. That's kind of the important mechanical things I added, but I also added some more kind of superficial fun things to the game. For instance, if the player kind of crashes now, they'll leave a splat where they hit and this splat will continue their velocity. So if they impact kind of from a side angle, the splat will smear itself forward. Um, this splat also appears when shooting um, to kind of show where you you fired your swords over the course of the level. Okay, now I'm going to jump into gameplay and show all those features in action now. We just skip past the cutscene that was showcased in the last video. Let's pick up our secret pineapple. And then let's pick up. You can see we've picked up one letter. We get a notification that we've picked up a letter up at the top of the screen. Showcase that again when we pick up another letter. There we go. And now if I pick up all five letters, we obviously get that final notification. Um, let me now showcase the cannons in action. So as we move close here, you can see they are firing seagulls quite rapidly at us. The seagulls <laughs> will uh, explode if they go too far in a glorious explosion of kind of blood and feathers. <laughs> We can shoot the seagulls out of the air. I uh, try and not get myself wrecked. There you go, we can see we fired our source blast and not that out of the air. 
We can also destroy the cannons themselves, and they uh, explode quite gloriously. <laughs> Also, um, I forgot to mention this when uh, going through the overview, but uh, Thomas also included a spin dash mechanic uh, with his development cycle. So you can see we can kind of spin forward and blast. Uh, this does use some of our source, so we can't kind of spam it infinitely. And obviously we can't uh, infinitely chain dashes. We have to wait for the first dash to end before we can initiate the second. Okay, um, finally then I'll move on to showcasing what happens when we kind of complete all of the objectives. Uh, the seagull nailed me out of the air then. <laughs> the turrets are completely configurable, um, so you can um, make them less deadly than they currently are by reducing uh, their turn rate and their track rate. Okay, you'll see as I'm completing these ingredient trials, we're getting the kind of at the top of the screen, the one ingredient trial uh, pop-up notification. And then when we destroy the spinach, which is the final ingredient trial, we'll get that uh, completion pop-up. And then we'll get a pop-up that says we've completed all objectives. And as you can see, this is the objective arrow I was talking about. This points us in the direction of the van, which is where we have to return once completing all objectives. Um, it tracks the van at all points. And we'll give a player kind of an indication of where they have to go once completing the objectives. And this is accompanied, you can see at the top, by the text that uh, lets them know they must return to the van. Before we do, though, let's uh, have a quick uh, in-depth showcase of the, some of the splats we can create. You can see by shooting the ground, we can create various splats. And this does stick to uh, whatever model we apply it to. So if we hit it on the car here, you can see the decal actually moves with the car as it travels. And you can see we should have a kind of source-coated uh, car here. There we go. And if I kind of try and splat an angle here, you can see the, the smear indeed um, moved with our velocity. Okay, and that is all developed for the sprint. I'll just briefly uh, go into the van and then the level. Thanks very much for watching.